I have come to the wonderful Home Depot. Why do you stick or have acne? Look at this man doing nothing. Cool, bitch. Cool, bitch. Okay, all right, but now we just add one more right here. Hey, we made the first convertible paint booth. I got hella pipe. Ah, oh, brake cleaning a wire brush. Oh, those chunks? This week's episode is sponsored by Parts Plus. I'm just playing. It needs to be sponsored by a barber. So if you've been following my Instagram, you could see that I've been doing a lot of painting recent recently. I took on a customer side project. To paint the vehicle, I made a makeshift paint booth. I just hung some Visqueen up on the walls. And I noticed about halfway through my paint job that I was getting a bunch of flakes and a bunch of dirt particles into the paint. So I've seen all the viral videos of making a paint booth for $200 and I kind of want to do my own spin on it. All the paint booths I've seen have been very, very temporary. Majority of them are made either through PVC pipe or some two by ones or something. And then they're disassembled after they're done and they're taken apart. I want to have something a little more permanent than that. I don't want to have to reassemble the paint booth every single time I want to paint. I kind of want something that resembles sort of an inflatable one where I just pull it out and it just sets up and I paint, let it set up, put it away. I don't really want to spend those precious, the precious hours that I do get spent at the shop taking apart and assembling a paint booth. Capiche? And to do that, I have come to the wonderful Home Depot and we're going to see if we can get this done. I have an idea. I, I think I'll, I think it's better if I just show you it. Hey y'all, I got, ain't no way. I got one question for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. What is this, bro? Why do you got these bubbles? Why does your sticker have acne? Because it's... <laughs> so what we have so far, we got some three quarter inch 90, three quarter inch tees, three quarter inch PVC. These are $2 a piece. We got a bunch of bulbs and a bunch of these things. All right, the first wall is done. I add a little bit of tension right here. Look at this man doing nothing. Hey, can I show your new wheels yet? Or did you post them? I'm gonna blur them out, JK, I don't know how to do that shit. The goal is to have a pulley that goes up there to up there, so I can just pull the string tight and the wall will come up and we'll have an open shop. Say what she said again. You make it sit so much more difficult. A little dark, but we got these eye loops tied in, got a little rope tied on, and there's two of us. So if we pull this thing at the same time, come on, Terrence. Pull a bit. Pull a bit. Okay. Nah, <laughs> I need to glue. All these things are not glued together yet. All right, bet we back. Take two. Let's get it, Terrence. Pull this thing up. Ding. Here, hold this. See? Okay. All right, but now we just add one more right here. So it pulls up also. And since it's flexible, since it's PVC, it'll go all the way to the roof. And then, yeah. Oh. I'll lower it down. Yes, sir. Hey, we made the first convertible paint booth. So that's my idea. You can see right here, all I did was light, extension cord, then this little bracket to hold it. Now, you have to be careful because these extension cords, if you keep coming, like if I were to plug one in right here, even though this one's going through another one, so I'm like daisy chaining them. If you daisy chain too many of them, there's gonna be too much ampage going through this wire. So you gotta read how much ampage is allowed through this wire. It's 12 gauge wire, 13 amps or 125 volts. So you, whatever light you're using, you gotta do a little bit of math and figure out what you can use. You can see how bright that is. That's just one light. And then you'll be able to just knock them loose, put that thing over the little chain, pull it up, and we'll have a non-interfering paint booth. Hello? What you doing here? You got anything to say? You want to plug anything? That's your car. It's day two. I brought shop dog. I got hella pipe. You're, he's gay! We're going to try to finish this paint booth today shop is a mess right now i've been trying to clean it up but one thing i've decided i wanted to do 
is if you look at the orientation of these lights, I put them on this side of this pillar, this metal pillar. So when it gets pulled up, as you saw from last video, if it's clear, it goes upwards and touches that roof. I want to flip it to the other side of these metal, bring it over so it can rotate up this way. What that allowed me to do is use those lights facing downward, even after the paint booth's closed. And plus it's easier to seal on this side. So yeah, we'll start by doing that. Need some flashlight on that. Dude, that's disgusting. Ah, oh, brake cleaning a wire brush. Are those chunks? Yeah, that's a chunk. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's a little chunky. <sighs> Anyways. Paint booth done. This side. We still have it on the hinges. So it rotates. What do you think? You're welcome. It's been about an hour and a half and I got this one up right here. I made a little keyway for the door. Now I'm hanging the tarp. I'm gonna wait on the lights for this one until a little bit later. But then we can see how it looks when it opens up. You want to paint? You want to paint? You want to paint? <laughs> Come here. Hey. Hey, buddy. A lot of you guys asked why in the paint booth we had this back door, kind of this accordion door set up. And if you haven't noticed, it's never been opened. The reason it won't open is because I need to do some clearancing. But the reason we made the door is so that when we have this paint booth, we can open that door up and we can sweep everything out and we can get all the dirt and everything outside. And then we can close that door up. But as we found out last night, this door isn't sealed. Obviously, I got a whole bunch of cracks in it. So we're gonna make a wall, PVC, Visqueen wall for this side as well. So we can just swing it up. It's gonna swing upwards. 
sort of like we saw last night with this one, how it swings up and this one, how it swings out, which I don't think I've shown you guys yet. The RS is in the way, but if I pull those ropes right here, this thing will swing out and become a new roof with lights on it that shine downward. Same thing with this one. Once I get some lights put on it, they're gonna be shining straight down right now. So same thing with that one, except it's gonna swing upward and the lights aren't gonna do anything because they're gonna be going into the ceiling, obviously. Today's day three. I got shop dog with me. Should be the final day of this project. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. But yeah, now I have the truck in here and this is the side project I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Um, I got all the sanding done. I tried, where are you going? Bye. I got all the sanding done. When I sprayed it the first time, we we're doing a color match and for some reason I'm I was stupid, did hard tape lines. So we have to come back, respray here, respray here, respray here. A couple of spots in the trunk, tailgate. But yeah, that's kind of why we're making the whole paint booth. I'm hopping all over the place. But basically, I tell you all that to tell you that we're gonna be building that back. We're gonna be building that back section today. And also, I don't think I really need to show you how I build these because it's kind of obvious. I just buy, this is three quarter inch PVC pipe. Um, these are, they don't even say on them. They're just the three quarter inch adapters. This is a 90, these are T's. It, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory. When I got the final construction done, I put some of the, the cement glue on it and then we attach it all together. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. So if you're doing this at home, you shouldn't have any problem doing this. Go, got the outside done. I'm gonna add some cross supports to it. And then we're ready. So here's what it looks like in final. I have the clamps up. Nice little clamp holders. I just got these from Home Depot, they're real cheap. They're what's holding the other ones too. So it can still rotate. And you can see it comes out. This one's gonna be trickier to set up because the visqueen has to go on the back side of it because the lights are on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tie a rope and then tie it up to one of the stringers and just hold it up. Try stapling the visqueen on the back side of it. Hopefully in a week or two, I'm gonna go get a bulk order of these LED lights and have plenty of them on this wall, this wall, and the wall that drops down up front. So we'll be able to come in here in detail. And while I'm at it, I might as well talk about over here. Since this will be mainly a paint booth and a little bit of a detailing area, I plan on putting two exhaust fans right here, just through the wall and put a filter on our side and then one intake fan on this side. So my goal is to put the intake fan somewhere away from that dirt. And so if someone drives by, the intake fan doesn't just suck in the dirt. Even though it will have a filter on it as well, we still just kind of want to eliminate that. Next, I have to seal up all these little spaces, seal up the corners, and then hopefully I'll have it insulated and fix the roof and we have a nice paint booth. So now we are on to day three of the paint booth and I'm sorry for the extra noise. I got puppy with me. And actually yesterday I tried finishing that side project, uh, the blue truck that's in the background. I painted it with the paint booth and it's current. From the last video you saw, that's the current situation that we have it in. We just hung a couple more lights. So um, I tried painting with it like that and I, I, I ran into some problems. I Number one, the, the overspray wasn't really leaving the area. And I know in a normal paint booth, you don't really want the overspray to be just sucked out. But it was to the point where like I couldn't, I can almost not see the car anymore because I have no airflow going through there. And also there are a couple of dark areas that just need to be fixed. So that's our plan for today. Well, another problem we had too is that the compressor was right outside the door and I had to like bring a compressor line inside the paint booth. So I'm gonna go ahead and map out where I can put a quick connect for a compressor. Like a quick connect so I can connect my gun to it. And then a water line going in there so I can have something to wet the floor. And then I probably also need to go ahead and finish uh, tying everything up so that when I have it in the up position, I everything gets sucked to the roof a little bit better. So yeah, we're gonna head over to, stop biting my wallet. You so I wanted to create this place, which is gonna be a hassle, you coming with me? A hassle-proof paint booth where I can just drop everything down and I can paint. 
and then I can lift it back up and not have to worry about it. But what I'm realizing is my design with these lights, having them stick off the PVC pipe, that re that's cool and all, but it removes about six inches of space. When it comes down and sitting vertically, I have to kind of crunch in close. When I do the other side layer today, I'm going to take advantage of the, of the recessedness of that plywood. And I'm gonna try to put my lights inside that plywood to give me some more room backwards and getting, you know, not have to interfere with me anymore. I also realized that I need to have a better filtration system. So I have two fans. I should show you what I bought. So what I bought is two small fans, real cheap, a couple of air filters, a whole bunch of these LED lights, these Eco Smarts, are the same ones that are on this side. And this time I'm gonna do a different approach. I bought actual housings. I bought some 12 2 wiring, 50 feet of it. And I bought a plug for now, but hopefully I'll switch over to a switch eventually when you have the electrician come in and wire up the actual lights. But my plan is to stick these on the inside between the plywood, uh, on the plywood between the studs, and then have it so I can flip a switch and just turn on all the lights because these don't need to move like the other ones. I don't know. I might just be rambling. Let me go ahead and unmask this truck. Get it moved a little bit, and I can go ahead and start on those lights. So here we are. I got them all wired up. But the way you're going to source the lighting is you're going to go onto your... I want to go ahead and preference this by I'm not an electrician. But if you go on and you can find the ampage on the light bulb, these right here are 160 milliamps, so 0.16 amps. You can source how many lights you're gonna have on one wire, which I have 12. Being safe, I calculated each one of these bulbs as half an amp. Even though it says the max is 0.16, I always want a margin of error. So doing that, I got the right size wire, which is just, they have three wires in it. it has a black, a white, and then a ground. And since these are LEDs and housings, they don't need the ground, they just need the white and the black. And yeah, they have two little slots on them, one for input and one for output. So you can kind of you can kind of just tag on to each one of these. I bought 50 feet of wire and that's how much it covered. So yeah, on that end for now, I just put a little outlet head. So I'll be able to put an extension cord on it. But on the in the future, I will be converting this over to like a switch along with the fan switches. So I'll have one switch from this side, one switch for that side, and one switch for the ones on top. So I'm going to go ahead and try plugging it in, see what it looks like. I don't want to do that on camera, just in case it blows up. So I'll be back. There we are. I did it perfectly. It didn't spark or anything. Plenty of light. I wish I would have done this last night so I could have painted with this. But now I'll be able to detail with it because it's so nice. Here. Go ahead and pop our head out. See how it looks. Wow. So if I, let me go ahead and close that other door. We can see what we have light-wise. There we go. I turned it into 0.5 mode to see what we what we have in here so far. Well, there we go. This is without any lights on the top or the side. Can easily see all of this. Easily can see low. See if I miss any spots down here. Very nice with all these lights. Cool. Yeah. So next is going to be adding some on the front. Add some on top and add some on the back. We're gonna let this paint cure for probably the week. Look at that color. Oh, that's gorgeous. And then we are going to sand and polish and buff it. And then this car is out of here.